Hello, my name is Chad Jackson, District Fish Biologist with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife out of Eastern Washington. Here with me today is Fishery Biologist Justin Spinelli, and we're kokanee fishing on Lake Stevens. Kokanee fishing in Washington State has really increased in popularity the last five to six years, and the department receives quite a few inquiries from anglers wanting to know where and how to catch kokanee. So today we're going to outline some of the basic yet effective fishing techniques and tackle used to catch kokanee that not only will be effective here in Lake Stevens, but as well as the 60 some lakes across the state where kokanee are present. Thanks, cameraman. <laughs> Straighten yourself out or put it in neutral. It's, fish. it's a good fish. Control for coconut today, we're going to be using what's called a downrigger. A downrigger consists of a spool of wire cable that goes through a guide, then a pulley, and then it's attached to a lead ball that weighs somewhere between 8 and 12 pounds. Attached to that lead ball is what's called a downrigger release clip. This is what we're going to attach the line to, and this is what's going to get our line down to the desired depth. To get started, first thing we need to do is get our fishing gear behind the boat. Kokanee are very spooky of boat noise, so I like to get my gear somewhere between 75 feet, 80 feet behind the boat. And to do that, we're going to pull out some line, and so I'm going to do 30 pulls. And the pull is defined as grabbing the line from the reel, going to that first guide. Depending upon your rod, that's somewhere between 2 to 3 feet. So I'm going to put pull 30 of these out first. 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. I'm going to grab my main line and I'm going to pinch it about three quarters to all the way back in the down rigger release clip. We're going to drop our lead ball over the side. We're going to straighten out the boom on the down rigger. Next, we're going to click the button to allow the line to go out. Make sure your thumb is on the line so you don't get a bird nest, and we're going to slowly go out. We're going to go down to about 25 feet. That depth's been working for us pretty well today. So to let the line out on the downrigger or the cable out, you pull on the handbrake here. And at the same time releasing, let a little bit of line out. Twenty-five feet. And then we're going to put the rod in the rod holder. One thing to remember about when you're fishing with the downrigger is that your line actually just isn't straight out or tight. It's actually at an angle about like this where the point is where your line is attached to the downrigger release clip. So in order to detect bites effectively, what you really need to do is reel down so the tip of that rod is right near the water's surface and it's as close to that downrigger release clip as possible. And so we're going to do that right now. Simply pull in line and reel in at the same time. About right there. As you can see, it's probably about four to six inches off of the water. That's perfect. You'll be able to detect bites then, and then when you get a hit, you'll be able to reel up the excess slack that much quicker and get tight on the fish. And there's a real light bite. I think it's a fish. Yeah, it's a good fish. What a weird bite. Just real, real light tap. Real nice little 11, 12 inch kokanee, very robust. Fought real hard, took a real light tap off the downrigger, but nonetheless, put them in the box. So when trolling for kokanee, I think it's really important to change your course of direction occasionally and zigzag to where you want to go. What happens when you do that is that your outside lure speeds up a little bit, your inside lure slows down a little bit, and the gear sways covering a little bit of horizontal distance. It's oftentimes when I make that turn that that little change in lure action is when I'll get a strike and catch a fish. Alright, 
fish hit it here on the 18 foot depth line, this rigger over here on the left, coming right at us. All right, so right here we got a very nice 13, perhaps 14 inch kokanee. We caught him at the 18 foot depth contour, really slammed it. Beautiful Lake Stevens kokanee right there. Seems like a nice fish swimming right at the boat here. Important thing to note about these kokanee is that they're very erratic fighters. They wrap up in the leader, they splash around, and complicating it is that they have very soft mouths, so they can really tear holes in it and spit the hooks really easy. And so it's real important to really be gentle with these. Don't horse them in, have a real soft rod. And I'm using what's called a direct drive reel, which essentially has a button that disengages the drag. So I'm just using my thumb. So if it wants to make a run, I just put enough tension so the line doesn't get all bird nest. But well, we just landed this beautiful about 15 inch kokanee just a little bit ago and we caught him a little bit deeper down at 45 feet. We were originally fishing around the 18 to 25 foot range but that bite kind of turned off and we have a little bit of a weather change here. Probably pushed some of those fish deep so as you're kokanee fishing you definitely want to experiment with depths and even lure colors and so when we did that we immediately got a bite within about five minutes of that change. We're taking a little break from fishing right now to talk about some of the tackle that we've been using to catch these kokanee. And the basic rig goes like this. You start off with a 4 aught dodger or flasher, and then you have your terminal tackle. And there's three main types that kokanee fishermen use. You have your plastic bead spinners like these. You have your plastic squid or hoochies like these. And then you have your spoons. Um, what I like to do next is tip any one of these lures with the numerous um, baits that are out on the market. Anywhere from the natural shoe peg corn like this to the artificial bait like these power maggots. I also like to take scents of different varieties and not only tip the lures but tip the dodgers. Provide a little bit of a scent trail entice those kokanee to your gear a little bit more. And while you don't need all of this gear to fish kokanee, you do need a little bit of a variety and you do need a few different colors. My recommendation would be to have a couple different types of spinners, a couple different types of hoochies, and a couple different colors and types of spoons. Um, the hot colors are the most common colors that are used, the number one producers tend to be your reds and pinks. But it's also good to have a couple different things like some oranges or some chartreuses. So the rig that we've been using most of the day and have caught most of the fish thus far is pretty simple. We started out with a 4 aught silver flash dodger, 12 inches, a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader, and a pink UV glow squid. Another important component of the rigs that's common throughout my gear is the hook setup. And what I like to do is I like to take two number two octopus style hooks and tie them tandem real close together. This ensures a very good hookup and I don't tend to lose very many fish. So go grab yourself a few dodgers, a few squid and a few spinners and a couple different colors and you have all that you need to catch kokanee in Washington State. Well we've completed our outing today with pretty good success. We have five nice kokanee ranging in size from 12 to 15 inches. We got a bonus rainbow trout and we actually lost three more kokanee at the boat. So armed with the techniques and tackle that we discussed today, you have all that you need to go kokanee fishing in Washington State. So log on to the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife website, click on the Fish Washington link and find a kokanee water near you. For the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, I'm District Fish Biologist Chad Jackson and thanks for watching.